All right, everybody, it's beautiful Sam. It's video number five. Today we're gonna to be talking about Hades. Um, I also went to Walmart today. I found this shirt. Now, I love sharks. My favorite sharks are tiger sharks, great white sharks, and hammerheads. But I don't like real life shark movies. I like shitty shark movies. Movies that are horrible acting, horrible sharks, like little cutout sharks, that's my favorite. But what I thought what would be cool is if I could turn this shirt into my shirt. That works! Wow! Look at that! I have about, you know, a couple more shirts I could probably do that too. Anyway, come with me, we'll go talk about Hades. Hello, kids! So, we're just gonna show you what a normal cleaning snake day is like. Because it's not all glitz and glamorous, it's not all feeding. Sometimes it's very tedious. Sometimes you have to go in here. Hi, buddy. You gotta take the water bowl out. Come here, Hades. And then you gotta take him, the snake out. Come here. Hey. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. You gotta take the snake out. Like this. Now see, as you guys know, this is Hades. Hades is a Colombian red tail boa. He's my beautiful baby. Uh, he's, I don't know, I think I got him when I was like 15 or 16 maybe. So I don't know how old he is. I'll have to do the math on that later. I'm not very good at math. Um, but yeah, you take the snake out. You can generally put him in a bucket, a tainer or whatever. Me personally, I just like to hold him. It's a good holding time. But you gotta come in here and you want to sift through the bedding. Now what you're looking for is you're looking for urates. You're looking for clumps of poop. You're looking for anything that honestly shouldn't be in there. Um, which I don't think I have. Where are you going, dude? Um, I don't think I have anything, honestly. So then you just want to make sure that the bedding is all rotated, which means stuff, uh, you know, make sure it looks like that. And you put the, the high low back in there. And then, now this is the most important. Now remember we talked about humidity in our last video because you guys were talking about how your snakes didn't shed properly? Humidity. I cannot preach humidity enough. But I've been, I've been asked, you know, how do you know how much is too much? How do you know not enough is not enough? Well, here's the method I do. It's kind of weird, but I do it like this. In my head, but I'm going to do it out loud for the first time ever, but in my head I do this. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. And then that personally is enough humidity you know, for that weekend, because like you want to do that two to three times a week. So if you go in there and you spray and you sing "Row, Row, Row Your Boat," or I mean, if you want to sing, I don't know, I don't know other little kid songs. Um, but if you want to sing some type of little kid song, it's only like a couple seconds long. You'll be good. So that's how you make sure your humidity's up. But like I said, we'll spray him down, like we just did. We'll clean this out. We'll put him back, and then that's how you clean his next cage. All right. So this is how you clean the water bowl. You take your sponge. I generally try to have one with a little. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's called scruff. I don't know, it's like, you know, it's whatever. It's called scruff. You want to have some warm water going on. You want to make sure there's some water in your bowl. Not a lot, just enough. And then you have, you can use several things to clean. You can use di diluted, like, Dawn just soap solution. But the only problem is with that, if you use that, you have to make sure that all of your soap residue, all of your soap is no longer in your bowl because that can make your animals sick. Uh, you can also use what they call chlorhexidine. Chlorhexidine is a blue, I don't know if you can see this, but it's like, it's a blue little solution that you mix with water. So, you know, we put it in there, we, put, we pour it in there, and then we, we take the sponge and we rub it, we rub it out. Now, chlorhexidine is used by veterinarians, it's used by zoos all around the world. Uh, I got this from that, where are you going, dude? Come here. Sorry, guys, my, my, my buddy's not cooperating here. Um, I got this from Appalachian Animal Hospital in Hazard, Kentucky. Yeah. You can get it from your local veterinarian. You can get it from, uh, uh, I think, in Florida, Underground Reptile sells it, Ben Siegel sells it. Uh, or you can also use white white vinegar. I would make sure that's the white side. Not apple cider, white side of vinegar. And you can take a little bit of vinegar, not a lot. This is what I prefer to use, honestly. And you just put like a little dab in the water. And you'll take your, your sponge, and you'll just kind of go around. You'll give it a good cleaning. And what the vinegar does, the vinegar kills all the bacteria, but it's not going to leave it's not going to leave residue. 
If anyone's ever cleaned with, re cleaned with vinegar, you'll know that it has a very strong smell, but it doesn't leave residue behind, and once you wash it off, it's completely fine. So, you'll just clean the bowl out like that, make sure you scrub on the sides, because even though you can't see the bacteria, even though you can't see the dirt, you can actually feel it with your fingers. Like when you rub your finger around, it'll feel like a, like a chalky substance. That's that's called, um, I don't know, I think it's called film or something. It's like, it's just what builds up in the bowl. You just want to clean it, give it a good scrub, like this, and then you just kind of want to rinse it off. So you'll rinse, you'll rinse it three or four times in the hot water and make sure all the, all the chemical that you chose to use or all the cleaning agent that you chose to use is off. And yeah, now every single time you clean their water bowl, you generally want to make sure that you are actually cleaning their water bowl. You don't want to just take water and spray water in their water bowl and then fill it back up. Because like I said, you want to get rid of that stagnant water, all the stagnant bacteria. If they've gone to the bathroom in there, because like a lot of snakes will go to the where are you going, dude? A lot of snakes will go to the bathroom in their cages, or sorry, in their water bowl. So you want to make sure you get all that off. So like I said, we're just gonna do this several times. Yeah. Alright, buddy. You got your water back. Go home. Bye. Now here's the thing I try to do with my snakes, guys. I actually try to let them go home on their own. I don't want to force them anywhere. Like I don't want to actually like shove them into the cage because I don't want going back in the cage to be a bad thing. I want it to be safe. I want them to feel like they're they're going back to where they belong. So I generally, so what I've always done with my snakes, I've always just kind of put their heads in and just kind of let them let them go as they go. Because you know they'll go if they want to go, and if they don't want to go, they won't want to go. So. You don't want it to be a bad experience. It's like putting your dog in a kennel. You don't want the kennel to be a bad experience. You want the kennel to be like a safe place. All right, buddy. Put your tail back in. Keep going, keep going. There you go. Put this in. All right, so anyway, I got Hades when I was about 16. Now, the thing about Hades is I got Hades because I did something stupid. So, what I did was, I was at church, because I'm a pastor's kid. I know, right? Holy crap. Anyway, I was a pastor's kid. While I was at church, I got really mad at this girl I was messing around with, seeing, whatever, whatever. She was talking to this little, I won't say what he was, but she was talking to this guy. And uh, basically, what happened was, it aggravated me, because she was talking to him, she was flirting with him, whatever. And so I went and I kicked this wall. Well, I thought the wall was like a drywall. So here I was, big Mr. Macho Man me. I thought I could go right through the, right through the drywall. Well, there was a stint behind the wall. So I hit the metal stint and I broke my foot. I broke three of my toes, the bone that connects the top of your foot, and I broke the, I don't know, the, the part that connects your ankle, whatever, broke that. Well, I didn't want to get in trouble because I'm always, always in trouble at church and stuff. So I don't want to get in trouble. So I decided I was going to go home and not say anything about my broken foot. So I was laying in bed, and it was around probably 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I just started screaming. Uh, oh, my snake's gone to the bathroom. What's up, Buffy? Um, anyway, I just started screaming because my foot was purple. It was no longer a normal color. It was just purple. So, I ended up going to my mom, and then my dad, and then my dad yelled at me, and they took me to the hospital, and yada yada, they found out my foot was broke. Please don't bite me. Don't bite me. You're okay. Uh, they found out my foot was broke, and yeah. So anyway, after I got my cast, I was feeling really down, I was having a horrible day, you know, I, I had broken my foot, I had lost a girl, obviously, because she was obviously talking a little, the little, you know, whatever he was. Uh, she was talking to him, and so she pretty much forgot all about me. What are you doing, dude? She forgot all about me, and so I pretty much lost my girlfriend, broke my foot all in one day. I wasn't able to go to school, so I wasn't able to ride my longboard because I was a big, uh, I was one of those kids that used to ride longboards for fun. I was a big longboard enthusiast. So, my mom, we were going underground reptiles to go get a mouse for uh, Rebel, because Rebel was my first snake, Katie was my second. And I went into underground reptiles, and there was this boa sitting in this little tiny container underneath the counter. Yeah, guys, I do this with my hands. Isn't that gross? Um, anyway, there was this little boa sitting in this in this container underneath the uh, the counter, and I asked 
I asked the Mexican Mike, that was his name, I said, hey, bro, bro, can I see the boa? He said, oh, that's too much snake for you, man. That, that's not like a, where are you going? Angel, I mean, Buffy, where the heck are you going? For real, come here, come, hey, hey, listen, we were trying to do a video, and you are acting stupid. You need to chill. Okay, now what? All right, hang on. Dude, okay, anyway, so, uh, I started looking at the boa, I held him and everything. My mom, uh, she goes, do you want that? Do you want that snake? And I was like, yeah, I really do. And so she bought me the snake. Much to my dad not wanting that to happen, she bought me a snake. I took him home, and he became my my cast buddy. Uh, there's countless pictures on my Facebook of him chilling on my ca uh, on my cast. There are countless pictures of him chilling in my hair because he used to like I used to have a little mohawk because I was a rebel all the way, like straight up mohawk all the way. So I got pictures of him chilling on my mohawk, and he became like my favorite snake. I actually took him to school all the time. Uh, my teachers love that, like they love that. We'd be watching movies, and all of a sudden, a snake would pop out from underneath my shirt. You know, great. Uh, my senior uh, quote was, I used to bring my snake to school. And it wasn't like a sexual quote, it was like, I literally used to bring my snake to school. But yeah, so that's how I ended up with Hades, and uh, honestly, he's been a really good snake. Uh, he actually started my love of boas. Um, he literally kicked my love of boas into overdrive. I just liked how big they got. I liked how docile they were. I love the way they eat. I like the way they move. Uh, one cool thing about boas, if you put it in a big body of water, which maybe maybe we can show you that, uh, they swim, and the way they swim is freaking awesome. Um, so I just, I mean, that's why I ended up, I ended up with like, eventually I ended up with like 30 some snakes. I only have 20 now, but I had 30 before I came to Kentucky, uh, and over half of them were boas. So yeah, that's how the story. Listen, Buffy, that's the story of how I got how I got Hades, and that's the story of how I became. You know, the crazy bubble guy. So. Alright, so we've cleaned this cage. As you see, I took all the poop out because that's what I was doing with my hands. Of course, you know, guys, by the way, I'm not scared of the Rona because I just literally touch snake poop with my hands. I mean, I'll do this and this and this. You know, just, just you know, do that a little bit. What are you doing? Come here. You mother. Come here. Oh my gosh. So like I'm not afraid of you know bacteria or viruses or anything. I know I probably should be, but honestly, like I mean, I literally just touch snake poop and just rub my face. So plus I put a rat in my mouth, you know, sucked on a rat, which is pretty good, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah. So anyway, we're gonna spray this cage down like this. Remember, we're gonna do the whole row, row, row your boat thing, you know, gently down the stream, or you can row, row, row your boat gently down the stream and throw your friend off the boat, unless it's a string, you know, whatever. Uh, I had really bad friends. They told me really bad things. We're gonna put. This is also a boa, in case you haven't noticed. Uh. This is a Hog Island, Hog Island Colombian cross, I believe it is, and she is dull. See, normally she's got all these pink. So let me see if I can show you. See all this right here? All this right here is supposed to be pink, um, and you see all that right there is supposed to be pink. But she's actually getting ready to go into shed. This is the first stage of shed. She'll do this, and then her eyes the next day will be all blue. She'll go what's in called blue phase, and she's actually getting ready to shed. So here you go, girl. Go back. I think that's why she's being so wily, because normally she's pretty chill. But like I said, boas are pretty chill, honestly. Um, they're a bigger snake, but they're generally pretty cool. Uh, we'll put that back on while I go clean her water bowl, because we don't want her to get out. All right, Mr. Angel. By the way, guys, uh, I hope you guys like the cages I made. You know, uh, I, I call it keeping snakes on a poor man's budget. Because I can't afford all the big, nice, fancy visions or uh, exo terrors or uh, I think there's zoo meds make a cage. So I literally make all of my own cages. And for the past, well, scratch that, up until a couple months ago, I didn't have a single snake escape for about seven years. But then recently I did. I'll tell you that story guys later. It was, the snake was found, of course, but uh, it wasn't pretty bad story. But it was my fault anyway because I made I made him a new cage and uh, I thought he was bigger than what he was. So when I made the cage, he actually was able to get out. I did find him. What's up, Angel? How are you? Angel is a Colombian. I bought him as a Colombian Hog Island cross. I really think he's just a pretty Colombian. I don't really know. Uh, he's a good boy. This is the mate to her. Uh, they bred. A couple years ago, actually, um, probably about 
four or five years ago they bred. Uh, and they had about eight babies. Uh, they had seven perfectly good babies. And then they had one really jacked up baby that I called Quasimodo. Like he had a bunch of kinks. Uh, he had one eye. Uh, he was off colored. It, it, it just something happened during the uh, incubation or the gestation. Because like I said, boas give live birth. They gestate. Uh, and it, it just kind of it kind of messed them up real bad. Oh crap! I was trying to breed them again this year, and I thought, but Angel was uh, Buffy was pregnant, but unfortunately after further observation and a couple months have gone by, I really don't think she is. Um, I think that I might have missed the mark, so I'll try to breed them again next year. You know that'd be cool. Uh, but again, like I said, this is a boa. Uh, this is a smaller bow. He ain't gonna get much. He ain't gonna get as big as Hades. Not not by a long shot. Uh, he does grow pretty rapidly, but he ain't gonna get as big as Hades. But bows are great. I mean, as you see, I'm just touching his head and just playing with him. But he's cool. That's Angel. Angel is actually the like I said, they're they're mated. They're a mated pair. Well, they're I, well snakes don't actually mate like mate mate pair pair up. But I like to say they're a mated pair. Like that's his girlfriend. And that's his girlfriend. And then on the show that he's, you know, Angel and Buffy, great, amazing show. You know, that uh, that's his girlfriend too. So, I'll have to change that water real quick. And we're gonna get my little spritz. It's all good. All right. All right. So, we have showed you boas. You know, so we're gonna go complete on the other spectrum of the scale, and we're gonna show you a patufus. A patufus is a type of colubrid snake. They inf they involve the uh, bull snakes, the gopher snakes, the pine snakes. I believe that's it. This is Opie from Sons of Anarchy. By the way, that is the saddest, saddest scene of anything I've ever seen in my life. Like that, that whole scene where they kill Opie. God, spoiler alert, but that was horrible. Anyway, this is Opie. Opie is a beautiful uh, gopher snake. Opie wasn't shed in the video that I showed you guys. Um, you know what? The lighting's not really good in here. Let's let, let's just go outside. Anyway, like I said, Opie, and uh, he just shed out. And the video earlier we did show you he was in blue. Well, it's been a few days later and he shed out. Look at them beautiful colors. Now the reason they are that kind of like leaf colored and dirt pattern is because they'll get down in the. I was gonna put them down on the ground, but I really don't want to. But they'll get down in the leaves and the brush of the forest or the woods or whatever, and they will camouflage themselves and they'll ambush a little mole or a little or a little. Uh, bird or another snake because they are they they, they 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 will eat other snakes i mean it's not common but it will happen so and believe it or not these are actually found here where i'm at uh these are probably found found where you're at too um gopher snakes but two fish snakes bull snakes uh pine snakes they're found generally all around the i think it's the western hemisphere i think is what it's called the western whatever anyway like i said yeah i'm beautiful sam i hope you enjoyed our show um, I hope you continue to watch. Uh, you can smash the like button. That's you. You stop freaking out, dude. Smash the like button. That's like right there with the snake is freaking out. You can watch my other videos up here. Uh, you can subscribe. There's a button thing like right here. I don't know. Yeah, it's somewhere down there. Um, hopefully we come up with better ideas. I I only do have 20 snakes, guys. So eventually we will run out of ideas. Let me know what you want to see. Please comment. Uh, my cameraman Larry loves to read your comments. He will take your comments into consideration, especially if you tell us to do something. If you have any ideas we can do, if he wants to come back, come like if you want to meet, like if you're here in Kentucky, and he wants to meet you, he wants to bring you some snakes, you want to talk, you want to hang out, you know, cool. I'm a normal dude. Um, hell, when I'm not doing this, I'm a, I'm a server, you know, that's what I do. I serve food. I'm like, hey, how can I take your order? That's just what I do. So, yeah, anyway, beautiful Sam here. Uh, you guys have a good day. Stay safe with the coronavirus. Um, just continue to watch my videos, guys. Just continue to support me, continue to love me, and I'll continue to love you, and I'll continue to do this for you. Peace out.